Well, hello there, friends. So today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make the world's easiest bar stool comfy com bar stool conversion. So we're going to go from this hard wood right here. Um, my, our church friend asked me just to wrap it in vinyl, but you know what? We're going to make it really nice for her. So I'm going to surprise her. We're going to put a cushion on there, some foam. And we're gonna put, uh, we're really gonna upholster this thing instead of just wrapping it in vinyl. So check it out all the way to the end, all right? We'll just start by taking it apart. What I usually do is I mark it up. So I'll put one, one, I'll put your two, two, three, three, four, four. So that way I know that these are going to go back together the way they came apart. No guessing. So she's getting the church friend discount which is like pro bono work, right? So, I found this piece of foam here. I think that'll work just fine for what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead, take my Sharpie right here, right? We're gonna mark it up. Mark it all the way around. Now we're going to take the cheapest tool in the toolbox. We're going to be using a hacksaw blade to cut this foam. And people in the comments are always asking me, so how many teeth uh, per inch are you using blade? So anyway, you know what? It's not rocket science, I always tell them. It's just a hacksaw blade. I just grabbed the first thing, that the uh, first hacksaw blade that I can reach so basically what you're going to start doing is just going to start cutting also you can see the video that i made about not using a bread knife to cut foam i'm going to show you here in a second why just follow it along normally i don't hold it this way so I guess I'll do it the way I usually do it, right? Because it's a little different when I'm trying to make a video. If I'm not making a video, I just kind of work in cruise control and I don't think too much about it. But when you start thinking about it, it's it a little more difficult. So this is medium density foam. I get those questions to medium density foam 24 TPI hacksaw blade and yes I've also used to use one of those handles that you put on the end of the blade but I think I used it once maybe 20 years ago so anyway, I just grabbed the nearest hacksaw blade that's laying around I'll just spray a little bit of glue, contact adhesive, and the cheapo Harbor Freight $29 spray gun. Okay, no special tip. It's just what comes out of the box. Never thin the glue. Okay, I get those questions all the time. So when you're gluing, gluing foam to something, it's best to keep the, the glue wet. Okay, you know, people say, well, you gotta let it dry for five or 10 or 15 minutes or whatever. But it's best if you really put it together when it's still wet. It's gonna stick a lot better. So anyway, I just put it there just to keep it from sliding around. 
Now all we gotta do is take our China marker pen right here. Or I don't know if it's a pen, but it's a marker. We're gonna use it to draw around, make our pattern. See if I can make this into a circle. One way to do that is to fold it in half. Well, it looks like you drew it out pretty good. Anyway, if you fold it in half, you can draw it like that. That's technique number 8,844. Okay, yeah, it wasn't too far off. Okay, so we'll go ahead and finish that up. So, another question I always get is how much allowance do I leave for, for the edge? So, uh, furniture, half inch is common. On automotive, three eighths of an inch. Okay, let's do the let's do it this way. About a half inch right here is common for uh, furniture. Okay, three eighths right here is common for automotive and boat, and either three eighths or half inch um, works for uh, boats. Actually, I see a lot of boats like that. So you can use either one. So now I'm just going to measure the outside here. I know you're saying, yeah, look at the look at the tape measure that guy's using, right? So anyway, it's still not rocket science yet. Okay, it doesn't have to be to the eighth of an inch or anything. Matter of fact, it says about 44. So I'm going to just make a strip up to 46. I'm going to leave a little bit extra. Why not? Because you always cut it shorter, but you can't cut make the short longer. Okay, so there's the 46 right there. And for the height, just measure that. Okay, we're gonna want some overlap over here. Say about an inch and a half, just to be safe. So it's pretty close to five inches. So, uh, you know, I'm just gonna make it four and a half. Four and a half will still give us plenty. Now I'll make it five. See, still not rocket science. I'll tell you when it's rocket science. When I tell you it's rocket science, then you get to start worrying, all right? And it's not rocket science yet. So it's at this point where I probably put a welt around here, which would look really nice. But I think, um, you know, since I'm not spending a lot of time on this or money, um, pro bono, pro bono work, I'm gonna just put a top stitch on there instead of keep it simple. So I'll just, just go ahead and start putting this stuff together. So remember I was telling you about leaving it long because you can cut it short. So that's what we're going to do now. Right there. That's where it's got to be. Right there. So that's where I'm going to cut it. Now we'll finish up the skirt. Okay, I should guess I should double check it. Yep, that looks good. Let's go ahead and just finish up the skirt. Okay. 
And now that that's sewn up, then all we have to do is just finish this one stitch right here. If you notice, I didn't lock that stitch because it's already locked here. like that. Now we're going to give it some character by putting a top stitch on here. So we're not going to lock this stitch either because we're going to hand tie it from the back side. I mean you could lock your stitch right here but it wouldn't look that great. I've seen a lot of people do that. Go, we got the top stitch. Now we're just gonna tie it from the back side down. Now for all of those out there who are saying, but, 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 it's not a perfect edge when you're cutting with a hacksaw blade, but, but, don't get butt hurt, okay? The reason I'm not so worried about that is because look what this is. This is some Dacron pad I'm going to put over the top of it anyway. It's going to make it beautiful. I'll just put a little bit of glue. The only reason for the glue is just so that way nothing's sliding around. Just like that. Now let's just put the cover on. Now you can move it around because it'll migrate and you can move it and adjust it so that way you know that it's centered especially in something that's round like this see that every second it's looking better and better okay so let's just start stapling it up so the heat gun always makes life easier.
Now just trim all the excess off, which you don't need. Some people might say that I could just go ahead and leave the bottom like that, which I guess you could. Most people never see the bottom. But I wanted to make this look a little bit more like furniture for her. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of this dust cover for the bottom. So do you remember all the markings I put on the bottom? Well, before I cover them up, I guess I should probably mark this too. So that way I know where everything goes. Let's fill with a four. So here's a three, two, and there's a one. Now we'll just go ahead and install this. There we go, more like real furniture now. So anyway, like I was saying, ah!